Hi, my name's Chris Tianga and welcome to Maverick Next Gen. Is spending all that money on the Remarkable Do worth it or should I be returning it? It's been four months since I've had the Remarkable 2. I'm gonna go and talk about the system for, on behalf of those people, newbies who haven't got it so that they can get a flavor of it. And also power users out there. I've picked up on a few points to help you guys decide. Well, you know, you've read the specs. I think that the thing that sells it most for me is the thinness of it. It's 4.7 millimeters and the screen, and it does feel like paper. Now, when I say smooth, I've written on it for, for every day since I've had it, and there's no wear on it. Whereas on other screens that you have of other devices, you can see the marks and it, it just, it just feels like quality, okay? One thing that you need to know is how long does the nib last for? Now, typically on the, on the website, it, Remarkable claim between three and seven weeks. But from my experience, it took me a month to go through a, a nib and I pressed really hard. And um, I'm gonna show you a picture of what a nib looks like when it's used and when it's, it's brand new. The other thing that you probably would want to know is, is how do you change the tips? Okay, so here I have a pack of tips. Okay, and actually I'll say, you know, say now that the, the Marker Plus came with nine tips plus one. The plus one already being one in the, the pen itself. And if you want to uh, change the nib, you can use the, the tool, this, this little entry point here. You slide it because there's a, it goes from a large, en large hole to a bigger hole using a friction fit. Okay. And then, can you see that? That's one way of doing it. And then just imagine if it was a new one, you'd bend it up and put that in and then press it in. Simple. Alternatively, you can just simply, using your, your thumb now and your first thing, finger now, you can just pull it out, okay? Right, so that's a new one. I'm gonna go and put back in the, um, the original one that I had. Just sticking it in here. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So that's how you change a nib. For the past four months, I've gone through three. So I on I average uh, a nib every four weeks. Um, I think you can be more conservative, and if you don't press as hard, you, it may be extendable to the seven weeks that they claim. The cost of extra nibs is such that. You can get a pack of nine for 14 dollars or 14 uk pounds but if you want more you can also go for a pack of 25 nibs replacement nibs for 34 dollars or 34 pounds and you can buy this from the remarkable website when you're using the pen i'd just like to add that the lag time when you draw for me it is it's, you just can't see the lag it just feels like a pen when I'm drawing on it. The other thing is that you need to know about is a folio, a protector that comes with it or the one that you want to buy. There are two flavors of a folio. It's just there's a standard folio which is where you literally get hold of the the remarkable and you put it in a sleeve and also the pen can be inserted into a pouch at the top. Now I purchased the the book folio which is essentially something like this, that opens up like a book. Kind of wished I did go for the regular folio because whilst this magnet is great and it makes it a nice click, there are times when I've picked it up so, and the pen just fallen off or for whatever reason, it's, it's interesting because had I not been at home during COVID times, um, I would be out and about picking it up and putting it in my bag and battering it around, okay? And what that would mean is I'm pretty sure this pen could potentially have got lost. So what I'm suggesting is that if I had to do it again, I would like to have got the regular folio because I want to put this pen in a pouch that is solid and secure. And therefore I wouldn't worry about losing this pen, okay? So that's just my personal opinion. 
The other thing is that I would say the benefit from having a book folio is that you can also get it in a um, in a premium leather, black or or brown, and it that costs one hundred forty nine dollars or one hundred forty nine pounds UK pounds. If you want to know the cost of the, um, the regular folio, which is the slide in one, that costs sixty nine um, US dollars or sixty nine UK pounds. Now that I've gone through the specs and also the pen that the options that you have there and also the folio selection let's talk about the, the costs in total so at the beginning i said to you guys you know is it worth buying now of course there's an upfront cost um, it's not cheap we all know that and you're here because you are actually thinking of pressing that that button to go yeah i'm going to pay for it so let's add up the cost the cheapest option that you can go for is the remarkable two at 399 with um, the marker, which is just the white one, which doesn't have the, the razor and a, and a regular folio. And that all comes to $517 or 517 UK pounds. If you decided to go with the marker plus and the polymer weave folio that I got, that sets you back at 597 US dollars, UK pounds. So, I have to say, because I got an early bird um, discount, it, it costs, I think, I, I got $100 less, 100 UK pounds less. But for, for you guys, you will be paying that $597 or UK pounds. And it's not cheap, right? So the next version would be to get the premium leather book, book folio. And adding that up, the Remarkable Plus, a Marker Plus, and a um, a premium leather folio would set you back $647 or UK pounds. Consider that and we'll now go on to, you know, what's the battery life like? Because ultimately you don't want to have to be charging it all the time. The Remarkable website claims that it's around two weeks um, of battery life if you use it constantly and I've I use it about two hours a day and it's a spread across meetings and journaling, reflection, all those kinds of things. And I get roughly about seven to eight days worth before I have to charge it up. And a test that I did, I let the battery run down. Um, so it was flat and I charged it for approximately two hours and that got the battery up to a 70% capacity. And then to get it to a full capacity, I had to charge it four hours for 100%. Now, the, the way you charge it is through a USB-C cable. And that's really useful because it's symmetrical, one thing. So you don't have to faff around figuring out which way it's up or down. But also, it, it charges quicker through a USB-C port. So that's the bonus. Now, some of you may think, oh, you know, really seven to eight days or two weeks, that's not long enough. Actually, um, for me, because I'm working at home, I'm always going to be near a PowerPoint, a USB charging point. So that's fine by me. But if you originally or if you still are a road warrior or a student always out on the go, there's a simple thing that you can do, and that's to bring a power bank with you there. You know, you can get them anywhere nowadays and high capacity ones don't cost that much. So if you're really stuck for, oh, I'm really concerned that I haven't got enough power, get yourself a power bank and, and you're fine to go. The next question is, this is a big, big thing that people may not know, but how is my data stored? And should I be concerned? Now, the Remarkable 2 comes with a um, specified eight gigabyte storage capacity and actually what you do have available on it well what, what i've got is i've got only six just over six gigabytes 6.41 gigabytes of internal memory okay and of that you you store all your documents on it document types pdfs epubs notebooks in order to get your notebooks and your pdfs 
onto your mobile device or your laptop, you sync the data up to a cloud which Remarkable hosts. And that cloud is actually based on Google's cloud platform. Okay. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because they don't offer a, a, local, a local storage mechanism, apart from the fact that you can take your, you can export your documents from your Remarkable 2 onto your desktop. Okay. But the, I have to say it's lacking. The, the applications that they provide is lacking. So why am I going on about this local storage and being able to export your documents to your PC? Well, it's, it's really important, this fact, because just say one day the remarkable cloud or the company itself stops trading, then what do you do? Your, your documents in the cloud at some point, will, you won't be able to access them. So it's highly recommended that you have an alternative, which is to basically be able to access your documents and download them to your PC or a different cloud, your personal cloud or whatever, for example, because that way you can be sure that you've always got your documents at hand. Remember that. Now, the reason why you need to know more about why it's in the cloud is that some people, and not necessarily myself, but there may be individuals who have sensitive data in their documents, their, um, their notebooks or PDFs that they don't want to have in the cloud just because of that fact. And what that means is that if you're, sync if you're syncing up your data to their cloud, that means they can potentially access that data or it's liable at risk to be accessed. Now, they do have a, a privacy policy and you can read it on the website and they, they encrypt data at rest and it's it's all very secure but if you do feel that this is not something that you you can use then the only thing that you can do is not uh, link your your remarkable to to their cloud and use it as an offline device which is also possible uh, but less useful from my opinion because you want to be able to take your your data and put it on different devices like your mobile phone so that you can view it when you're on the go, or you can view it on a desktop. And, uh, that is a limitation. And if I want to search for a document and reference it whilst doing notes on the Remarkable, I can bring it up in the Remarkable mobile app because it's really simple to do. The, the other great thing about the mobile app is that you can search documents quicker than you can type in the Remarkable too. Can I send documents via email? Yes, you can. There's a, a little button that, that you can press and it says send by email. Being able to send your documents via email is beneficial for, for multiple reasons so that you can share it with your friends, your colleagues, but also you can integrate it with external applications. As an example, OneNote, which I've done a video and you can find out more about it up here. And secondly, I also did a video on how to integrate with Microsoft Teams, which you can also find up here. Another question. You, you all know that this device comes with templates, which are ready-made images that you can use to describe on. As an example, if you have a ruled journal in, in, on paper, the, the template that you can find is, is a journal lined paper. And you can select it and you can write on it. Are the templates any good? Yes, they are. And you can see it coming through here. So spoiler alert, for you newbies out there and for those of you power users out there, you know that the templates provided are really good. However, the lack of functionality to be able to upload custom templates makes this a massive problem to productivity. And I'll show you more about this in a later video. One thing you should know about the navigation of the Remarkable 2 interface is that you suddenly rack up hundreds of documents. It becomes very unwieldy to search and navigate. And yes, they do have folders, but let's face it, who can remember lots of folders, uh, tree structures going down? So I don't actually have many layers of folders. But what I will say is there are two main things I want you to take away. There is a list view that you can have, which just simply 
lists all the documents in it with a little little thumbnail and um, the length of the actual title string when you have it in this view is 75 characters and the other view that you can look at notebooks or PDFs and EPUBs is a grid view and in the grid view the maximum that you can see is a three by three of notebooks journals or PDFs and the character length that you will get from that grid view is 23 characters. Now the reason why I say this is because it's imp important to know the, the lengths of the titles from, from the perspective of the list view versus the grid view because you want to know immediately when you're viewing your document types where your information is contained in. Now the last question is how do software updates occur? You can get software updates via Wi-Fi and it will update depending automatic it'll update automatically depending on whether you've toggled that switch to say automatic updates please and as of the current version i believe a new release has come which has just come out and there we have it so that is the system in its entirety well i hope you enjoyed that review of the uh, remarkable 2 so that now you can decide whether you want to get one or not or even return it and if you liked my uh, video, please click on the subscribe button and click on that notifications bell to see new videos that come shortly. Thank you. And don't forget to hit that like button. See you later. And in my next video, I'll be showing you the second part of this series, which is the in practice, what are the pet pains and how I overcome that. So stay tuned and see you later.